So overall, the I believe the scientific community and the public are well aware of traditional lipid screening and its use for cardiovascular risk prediction purposes. Um, however, we do know that probably approximately half of individuals who are diagnosed with heart disease um, ha end up having normal LDL cholesterol values. And the LDL cholesterol itself, people know as the bad cholesterol, but that calculation doesn't necessarily tell you anything about the number of LDL particles that you have in your, in your blood. All it tells you is the cholesterol contained within those LDL particles. It doesn't tell you, like I said, how many there are or if they're functional, just the cholesterol content. Um, so overall, the, number, the more particle, LDL particles that you have, the more risk that you have is directly related and correlated, similar with LDL cholesterol. Generally, this test would um, not necessarily be useful in everybody or the low-risk um, individuals, so more of your intermediate uh, to high-risk patients. So if you have um, risk factors for cardiovascular disease, if you're diabetic, if you're hypertensive, um, if you're obese, if um, you have a strong family history of cardiovascular disease, that's the, the population really that we're targeting and that's where there's a lot of discordance between cholesterol and particle number and so essentially like I said the more particles that you have the worse off that you are and so um, in that subset of individuals your your therapies could be more aggressive or you'd want to provide more education. We do have um, you know a relative kind of risk stratification categories similar with LDL cholesterol where there's you know moderate high um, high categories and so um, essentially it's a continuum or a spectrum of uh, risks. So generally the the first um, round of, of treatment involves trying to educate and advocate for lifestyle modifications whether it's more uh, exercise, changes in your diet, if that still doesn't prove to be um, beneficial, so that if the LDL particle number is still high enough or it's elevated, um, then you would try maybe different treatment modalities or more aggressive um, statins or fibrates or cholesterol absorption inhibitors. So you could modify the actual therapy based on the LDL particle number. Driving the LDL cholesterol goals keep kind of being driven lower and lower um, because essentially in the population that you're looking at, your intermediate to high risk population, um, it's not reflective of necessarily the number, of, still the number of particles. So they keep driving the the LDL cholesterol goals down further, essentially to drive the particle number down further. So in your Patients who've had events, um, or if they're diabetic, their optimal goal would be an LDL cholesterol less than 70, um, with a at least less than 100 milligrams per deciliter um, goal as well. The test is performed using um, an NMR um, machine, and it's actually a pretty highly automated NMR instrument, so not not a traditional um, instrument like many people are used to. So this test is not designed or meant to replace traditional lipid screening or testing. It's really meant as a supplement, so it should be looked at as advanced lipid testing. Um, there's still benefit to total cholesterol, triglycerides, um, LDL, and HDL. It's just that um, for a specific subset of individuals, again, those intermediate to high-risk patients or diabetics, that's really where it's going to have added benefit.